I'm John Fensterwald. And I'm Kathy Barron. Together we write and edit TopEd.org, a forum on California education policy. Join us while we interview interesting and important leaders in education. You'll learn a lot in 10 minutes or less. I'm John Fenstewald, and I'm pleased to have with me today California State University East Bay President Mohammed Kayomi. The president has been, uh, he's been president for four and a half years and a university educator for three decades. He's also a tenured professor of electrical engineering, which gives him an interesting perspective on a subject that we're going to talk about today, which is STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math education. So, Mo, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, John. So you're championing a uh, STEM education in initiative on behalf of the university. So please tell us, what is it and why is it important? Yeah. Well, STEM education is very important because it's so central to our global competitiveness, our national security, and the quality of uh, life that all of us would like to have and creating the thriving communities and economically successful areas. And if you look at uh, uh, the jobs that are uh, that are fastest growing, seven out of 10 in the next 10 years will be in the STEM related field. And of the 25 highest paid jobs, 16 of them will be in the STEM related field. So it's so central to our regional stewardship and future economic uh, uh, viability and vibrancy of our region. Obviously critical, not just to the Bay Area, but to all of California. So there are three components uh, to this STEM initiative, and uh, they are graduating STEM ready professionals, increasing the quality and quantity of teachers of STEM disciplines in K-12 grades, and also partnering with industry and community groups to uh, build a pipeline of students ready to enter to study chem STEM in college. So just let's talk about the last two today. Uh, preparing K-12 STEM teachers, um, what are your hopes and, and for the pipeline here? Okay. Well, first of all, Cal State East Bay is proud to say that we uh, graduate the largest number of math and science teachers in the California State University systems. Moreover, uh, you know, all of us believe that our children are the most valuable treasures that we have. So if they are the most valuable treasure, what can we really do to nourish them and give them the best opportunity in education? And as part of that, when STEM readiness is so critical, so that's why the university have put a lot of emphasis in making sure that we have not only the best teachers, the most qualified one, and also the, uh, the largest number that we can, so we can help the region because that's so central to our regional stewardship. So what makes it distinct? What makes the, uh, the preparation program at uh, Cal State East Bay unusual in terms of preparing STEM teachers? Well, there are several factors because first of all, when you talk about learning, learning is not just uh, accumulating new information, but it's really an enduring uh, uh, attitude towards critical, uh, critical thinking, uh, being able to work in groups, and also be able to remain engaged and be a lifelong learner. So one of the things that we have been very successful in seeing how we can use the latest technologies in a very uh, strategic way. I mean, I'm talking about technologies that our youth are very, uh, are very prolific about. When we talk about elements such as uh, uh, social networks, uh, second life, augmented reality, uh, Twitter and others. We have brought all of these different technologies and we are trying to uh, integrate these ones in our, uh, in our teaching methods so we can keep the students far more engaged. Because part of it is that if you are able to increase the college going grade of, an, uh, of our region uh, for that, you know, if you look at the 50 uh, metropolitan areas in the country, 1% increase will mean an increase of $124 billion in uh, uh, income. So uh, assume if you can do that on by 10%, that's over a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh, you also um, have special programs for elementary teachers as opposed to the specialty uh, high school and middle school teachers. Uh, that's very correct because elementary school is so profound and so important, and especially given that in California and the multi-subject uh, credentialing, many of the teachers do not get adequate uh, uh, preparations in the science and math area. So what we have developed is additional certificate programs that some of these and the, uh, teachers who are already part of the 
uh, service where they can come as in service and continue to take these uh, certificates and increase their competency and since we can offer some of these ones online they can do that one while they're still working without commuting to the campus. It must be very important because you hear that there's less professional development money and so these opportunities are, must be important uh, I, to the teachers. I think these opportunities are there, it's, you know, unfortunately there are not enough of them, but I think many of them are there and I think in many cases some of the teachers realize that for them to become more, uh, to become more marketable and trying to keep their skills, many of them are trying to pursue those. So let's talk about partnerships with community groups and industries. Where do they fit into this uh, bigger scheme of things? Well, partnership is so critical to what we do and as part of it, one of the uh, alliances that we have built, which is one of the four uh, models nationally, and it involves Santa Clara County, uh, Alameda County, and, and Contra Costa County, which is about 10% of the K-12 population for California, and only seven states that has a larger uh, K-12 population. And within this, uh, we're working with community colleges, we're working with the K-12, we're working with social agencies, faith-based uh, entities, uh, foundations and many corporations and trying to uh, identify uh, methodologies as well as measures to hold ourselves accountable on how students we can prepare students to get to school uh, to be able to be successful in their schools uh, be, uh, be ready for post-secondary education and be STEM ready so this is a truly a cradle to career model and in a very holistic way, preparing students at all levels and working with all of the different uh, key stakeholders in our region. Particularly important since there's less money for after-school programs to have these ties, I'm assuming. Uh, that's true, but I, you know, but what we have all, uh, what we have tried to do is see how we can align all of the different activities that are so, uh, currently funded by foundations, by state agencies, by social uh, services, and by faith-based institutions to align all of these ones so we can increase the amount of effectiveness because the level of the alignment of these efforts really uh, prove the level of success that we'll have. So I understand, I know that uh, um, accessibility to uh, minority communities is very important, one of your pillars of this program. Tell me how you're uh, reaching out to the communities. Okay. We have a very, uh, very strong uh, outreach program to all of the different uh, communities in the Bay Area. You know, first of all, we, uh, we work with over 40 African-American churches uh, to reach to the African-American community. Uh, we work with uh, several uh, social organizations uh, with the Latino Hispanic community. And we, uh, on an annual basis, we have an educational summit, a Latino education summit and African-American education summit. We also offer quite a few math academies throughout the Bay Area, as far east as uh, Brentwood and as far south as uh, Fremont. Uh, next year, we'll have about 28 of these, and we hope that we can increase these ones more and more. And uh, also, we uh, work very closely with the four national labs, Lawrence Livermore, Lawrence Berkeley, NASA Ames, and Sandia, as well as many corporations who really believe in this and are trying to see how we can really build the next uh, generation of the workforce. So what's the timeline that we're talking about to build out this initiative and seeing the, it bear fruit? Well, the, this is an ongoing uh, element, and uh, of course, uh, what we have tried to do is to try, as, uh, as I said earlier, with our gateway cradle to career initiative, to work back all the way to the cradle uh, level and and uh, the, the preschool. So I think you know we are seeing the progress of this. We have been increasing the number of students from all of the not only the. Uh, underserved communities, but if you look at our College of Science and College of Business, for instance, two-thirds of the students are students coming from of students of color. So we have really been very successful in attracting, but not only attracting them, but being, in making sure that they are retained and they graduate in these fields. So that basically is what we really take a lot of pride in. Well, President Kaomi, thank you very much for joining us today. We look forward to uh, seeing the progress of your initiative and having you back again sometime. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm John Fensterwald, educatedguest.org, toped.org. Thanks for watching.